Man, it feels good to be home. What is going on, everyone? Welcome back to yet another installment of Red Cat Live. If this is your first time on the show, thank you. Appreciate you. If you stick around and you enjoy what you see, make sure to click that notification bell. Make sure you subscribe to us so that you get notified every time that we go live. If you are a returning member, y'all are the real MVPs. Thank you so much for coming back week after week to see this ugly mug that likes to eat tacos and talk RCs with y'all. So appreciate you guys, man. Uh, we just got back from Florida. It was insane. It was wild. It was a great time. Um, I got so many things to just uh, chop up and share with you guys. So first and foremost, let's say what's going on to a couple folks, man. Mr. Brennan Armstrong, I'm going to be in your neck of the woods next week. And I'm going to be in your neck of the woods again in two weeks after that. So uh, we'll talk about that here in a little bit as well, about what is to be expected and where we're going to be in the next couple weeks as Red Cat. Um, Louis Alcala says, hola. Vince Vargas, what's going on, big homie? How you doing, man? Thank you so much, man. I'm glad to be back. Uh, Eric Mathiasen's in the house. What? Checking in from the Vatican City. Man, Aaron, that's some ways away. Christopher Verado, what's going on? Good, sir. Thank you so much for stopping on by. Mike Rodriguez, what's up? Terrence Clark, good, sir. How you doing? Jesse Macias, hey, what up? Uh, Malo, what's up, Malo? Hope you, hopefully you're having a good day, bro. Um, Kyle Goodell, how are you? Good, sir. Uh, represent Alaska. What? Oh, I love it, man. I love when I get to see a lot of folks from all over the place just stopping on by, man. Uh, Nelson, how you doing, sir? Thank you for stopping on by. Ken, what up, what up, man? Um, Terrence Clark, wow. Uh, man, I'm doing good. Thank you for asking. I appreciate that. Uh, D'Angelo Williams, man, what's going on? Good sir, representing Denver, man. That's awesome. That's awesome, guys. Uh, Nelson's uh, coming all the way from Pennsylvania. Jay Babula representing Pennsylvania as well, man. So, guys, appreciate you guys coming on back again. Uh, I know that uh, last week we did not have a show. Uh, for those that, of you that don't know, uh, myself and some of the staff ended up taking off to Florida last week. It was in uh, observance of attending USTE, the Ultimate Scale Truck Expo, which is held in Williston, Florida. It's an event that brings people from all over the world that are absolutely huge, heads over tails fanatics of the scale RC scene. More importantly, the tiny trucks. Um, they're not a crawler scene, but they are a scale truck scene. The trails are manicured and set up so that all of the tiny tire trucks uh, look really cool. A lot of great photo opportunities and video opportunities as well. Um, it's an event that brings a lot of labor of love. A lot of folks from all over the U.S. and across seas come to this event specifically to have fun and bring their completely scaled out uh, vehicles that are complete models that have remotes. So if you are a true scale geek and, and, and are enthusiast about that lifestyle, USTE is definitely the place you kind of want to be at for that. Um, it's a great event. It's a great show. Um, you're going to see things from crawlers of all sorts, semi trucks, if you're into the big haulers, uh, and from the last few years, including this year, they even brought in a drift track. Not just a drift track, but they also brought in a mini drift track. Double, triple, quadruple, shout out to RC Supremacy. Brad, you the man, homie. Um, but really, guys, it's an event that really highlights a lot of people's hard work where people can show off and showcase their amazing vehicles that they do, right? Um, didn't see a lot of lowriders there. I'd like to see some more in the future. I did spot a few here and there, but it would be nice to see a little bit more of that scene because I'm telling you, the talent that you guys bring to the table when it comes to the RC lowrider scene would definitely be greatly appreciated by these folks. USTE hosts classes throughout the entire time. The event goes uh, Thursday, Friday, and Saturday. Every day there's usually one to two classes that are shared with people, things that uh, bring you knowledge such as paintwork, how to do patina style paintwork, uh, maybe something as simple as wiring if you're new to the hobby and want to do more intricate wiring jobs, um, scale accessories. There's a lot of classes even photography classes that are given to people so that he can help you elevate your game and make sure you're not doing one of these with your other cars in the background, but take it outside and get a nice low shot and angle it just right so that it looks good. So this is kind of the, the mecca when it comes to the scale RC scene. And, and trust me, it doesn't disappoint. 
I think they had about uh, 10 trails to have fun on, a couple ramps to send their vehicles off of, of all kinds, um, and quite a bit of vendors. Um, so many vendors that I, I honestly lost count. But again, really a great, great event. And if you have not participated or know much about it, we strongly recommend you check it out. But you don't have to take my word for it. Watch this and let me know what you think. Check it out, we're at USDE 2023, and you know your boy can't make it anywhere unless he's got tacos. <laughs> My dude, where are you from? Where are we coming from and what are we eating? I'm from Quakertown, Pennsylvania, and we're eating tacos. You hanging out with the Taco King himself. We appreciate y'all. From Florida, coast to coast, to the west coast, to the east coast, we're having a good time because tacos, baby. Yeah! All right, guys, so there you have it. There's just a little bit of what we can expect at USTE and what they've been able to bring to the table. A lot of organizations support this event, such as Operation 11 Charlie, um, Reefs RC was out there, King K Hardware, J Concepts, Pitbull Tires. Um, the list goes on and on. Again, just a really great event. Uh, and it was really just awesome to mingle with a lot of folks. And as you guys can see, maybe not find the best tacos in the world, but I did find some. I had some. I had to. <laughs> uh, but it was really an awesome time to uh, to just really enjoy and take in the scenery and have fun with a lot of great people. Uh, I want to give a special shout out to Carry All RC as well for always bringing in an awesome, awesome amount of stuff. They sold out immediately with other awesome trail bags. I even was able to get my own actual bag, autism themed with my Red Cat logo on it. I'm so juiced on it. So, Mike George, thank you so much for that. Uh, but guys, it is. It's a great event, right? We arrived, uh, I believe, Thursday evening. It was a full day of travel. We go and set up Thursday, um, had the event Friday and Saturday and Sunday. It's a three-day event. And then we ended up making our way back to Florida where we ended up traveling for eight hours to get home. But is it worth it? I absolutely 
feel it is. It's definitely an event that uh, uh, was absolutely fun for a lot of folks and everyone involved. Jen Zace was there handing out batteries and having a good time. Eric Sassano, man, shout out to you, brother. Uh, it was always great seeing you. He had his RDS out there. Um, Rhodes at RC. Troy, he had his RDS out there. I had my RDS out there. And we were just getting down, man. It was just an awesome time all around. And honestly, one of those things where I just kind of wish I could get a little bit more, right? And that's kind of a true testament of the event, that if you had a good time and you didn't want it to end, then obviously it was well worthwhile, right? So let me stop here really quick and take a couple uh, of these conversations, make sure I'm seeing what's going on to everyone, man. Um, let's see. Christian Bernardo, yes, we need some RC lowrider awareness out there. Agreed, man, absolutely. Uh, South Florida RC crawlers, what's good? What's going on? Thank you so much for stopping on by. We appreciate you. Um, let's see. Chris Lopez, yes, we are live now, I think. Am I live? I may not be. It might be back to the future. Maybe. I don't know. <laughs> um, let's see. Tony says, cool Jeep. I mean, you got it, man. This is my Gen 9. We'll talk about that here in a sec as well. Um, let's see. Tony Bagby says, uh, was there at USCE? And it was awesome, man. I appreciate that feedback, man. Um, let's see here. Okay. So, yeah, guys. So, you know, we have a couple – Things to kind of catch up on, right? Aside from being gone at an event, uh, we also have quite a bit of other events that we're trying to gear up for. Uh, we did the crawler thing this last week, uh, the scale scene. So that progresses us over to the one-to-one -one scene. Uh, next week, not this Saturday coming up, but the following Saturday, uh, we should be out at Long Beach to open up the season opener for the Lowrider Magazine's Lowrider Super Show. Should be a great event. If you are in the area, stop on by. We'll have our booth set up. Aside from that, the awesome folks, uh, the Jeffrey, Jeffrey's in the camp are going to be setting up this awesome hop-off competition and their own car show there for the scale scene. I'm telling you, you don't want to miss this. If you're anywhere near the area, you're going to want to go check it out because they're going to bring it the Whittier street scene. They're working diligently with a lot of folks locally to hopefully bring out a couple more uh, scale scenery so that they can make it really enjoyable for you guys, the lowrider fans, RC lowrider fans. So uh, big shout out to Jeffries, big shout out to everyone involved, Armando, um, the whole team, man. You guys are going to do great. I can't wait to see you guys and see what you guys bring to the table out there. I am sure it's going to be nothing short of epic. If you want more information on that sub event happening at the uh, lowrider uh, magazine Super Show, go check out Jeffrey's page as well as the RC Lowrider page. There's a couple posts already going up um, that have a little bit of information as far as times, as well as the charges for entering your vehicle in there, uh, I believe the hop-off that they have. But it should be a great time and a great event. Stop by, check it out. Stop by and say hi to us. Uh, we always enjoy seeing everyone's builds. Um, I'm hoping to always take pic pictures of you with your vehicle while I'm out there. And I would love to share them on our show like always. Um, let's see here. Jared Harrington, when is the Shredder going to be back in stock? Um, I don't know at this moment, Jared, but hopefully if we get some more information, we'll be happy to update the pages uh, as we go. Thank you for the question. Um, True Tech, what's going on? Appreciate the love on the vet, man. It's uh, uh, We'll get into the vet here in a sec, but, you know, let's get into it now. But... Nonetheless, guys, definitely next week, Long Beach. We're going to do that show. It's going to be a great time. Uh, and then I come home for one week, and then we go back out to RCX, which will be at Pom in Pomona. Um, I look forward to that event as well. It is something really fun for all the RC enthusiasts. If you're part of the later La greater Los Angeles area and or surrounding areas, RCX is a great event. Check it out. I believe it's also going to be a one-to-one -one uh, show as well as an RC show. So definitely something to look forward to and to check out. Let's see. Oh, RC Patina guy, Eric, what's going on? Good, sir. Thank you so much for stopping by. Seth Livingston, are the Deatons ever coming back? That stuff was the first batch of teas. It was a definite tease, bro. Um, you know, just it, sorry. No. Um, we'll get into some of that here in a sec, man. Stay tuned. I will give you guys some updates on some things that are coming uh, as well as potentially some 
um, ETAs on some things that some of you guys may be waiting for as well. Now, back to the vet. The vet itself, uh, this is actually a HPI body. Uh, I built the uh, RDS kit. Once I built the kit, I went ahead and put some electronics in it. Um, so this is my personal car, uh, my RDS. And of course, my RDS runs at the moment off of a um, D10 hobby wing system. It is a 10.5 turn motor. Um, it, I do run the Redline 130C 4000 Ma packs. Love them. Uh, this bad boy is running a Yokomo servo uh, as well as a gyro at this time. I do have another car that has some different electronics that I'm playing with as well. Um, this car was at USTE and had a good time. I definitely need to get a lot more wheel time. Listen, guys, I'm not saying that I'm a good drifter. I'm a good sideshow artist. Like, I can sideshow like no one's business. But drifting, I'm still learning the ropes. Can I hold my own? Yes. Can I stay on your door? I might bump into you, but I'm having fun learning. And that's the greatest part about this sector of the hobby is that it actually opened up an avenue to have fun that I personally hadn't had. And I know a lot of guys that work here didn't have either. And we wouldn't have had the opportunity without the amazing work of our engineer, Shane, who put a lot of effort into this chassis. So uh, definitely something to check out and look forward to. Um, RDS, you can make it any way you want. There's so many bodies out there. Uh, this body in particular, I went ahead and painted in a two-tone. So the, the front is actually a candy yellow uh, backed with a metallic gray. And then the back is a, a metallic silver, uh, which you guys can see there. Now, on the nose, I don't know if you'll be able to tell, but there's a holographic sticker that I put underneath to make it pop, which is the Red Cat logo as well. And then, of course, I got to give a big shout out to my brother that's up in the sky. I made sure that we put his uh, his name and his uh, his dates there so that we can always keep them in our hearts. Um, so, yeah, man, that's my, uh, my go-to car right now. I love it. I'm having a good time with it. I know a lot of guys out there have a lot of different setups. I have a lot to learn, guys. I'm not the know-it-all when it comes to this scene. I'm learning as I go, and I appreciate you guys learning with me as well. Um, let's see. S is for Shan. I agree. I agree. Uh, Jesus Martinez, yes, the Long Beach show is only nine days away. We'll be there. Um, so, all right, guys. So, yeah, so that's, you know, my my RDS car. Um, big shout out to RC Plate Shop. Um, Ethan did a great job at making me my stickers, as always. Um, again, mentioned my Brandon Tomey sticker, my wings in the back, uh, as well as my signature license plate, which I always rock, right? So, uh, love the car. I'm enjoying it. I had a lot of people drive it out there as well. They enjoyed it as well. Unfortunately, when I got back, I had to do some cleanup because it just got dirty, right? Uh, but moving on and enjoying the scene and enjoying the, the hobby, um, I was also able to take out my Gen 9, right? It's not your standard looking Gen 9, um, but this is my Gen 9. And a lot of folks want to know, well, what was done to it and what makes it a Gen 9? Well, everything underneath it is a Gen 9, man. <laughs> Uh, this bad boy is equipped with uh, trio hobbies, axles, front and rear, uh, lower mounts as well, um, as well as bumper mounts, um, shock towers. Everything that trio makes for this thing, I pretty much have with the exception of the brass goodies. Uh, the wheels were a set of wheels uh, that were once offered by Reefs RC. You guys can take a look at right there. Got some scale uh, hubs on it as well. This thing's a pig. It's heavy. It's powered by a Mamba X Micro ESE, and I believe it is a 2250 kilovolt system. With a two-speed transmission, it is plenty. Now, just so you know, the micro system is not intended for rigs that weigh over eight pounds. I am right at the 8.2 pound range. Um, knowing that, obviously, I did not beat the truck up. Well, I, I beat it up. I'm not going to lie. Um, but it held up, it held up well held up with all of the uh, temperatures that were up there. Florida gave us a range of hot to humid hot to then like really cold and then hot again. And the truck did really well through all of the paces. Um, it is sitting on some uh, scale internally sprung shocks just to kind of keep her bouncy on the trail and looking a little realistic. I do have some halo headlights in it as well, that color change, um, which was fun to do. 
Uh, it does have a raw 500 Reefs RC servo, and I do plan on uh, also adding a couple of different things to it as we go. Due to the fact that I'm running this Enjora body that sits really low, I had to make some modifications to fit it on this chassis. Some of the modifications, which you guys are going to trip out, the body posts on this thing, I decided to actually hide them inside. Let me see if you guys can see that there. So the body post is actually right here. I can take the pin out. That, and there's the body post. The body pin. So I put them on the inside so that when I close the doors, you can't see the body posts. So once we take off that, we can then lift this bad boy up. Of course, I have some wiring for my headlights and my taillights. Things wired underneath. I had to do a little bit of trimming to make sure that I can clear all of the electronics that are underneath. Because the um, sides, the, uh, the sliders were um, too wide, in essence, I had to narrow those down um, and actually reuse the sliders that came on the Gen 9 and just use some spacers to lift it up. And that allowed me to then put it in there and actually have the body sit in the sliders, which adds protection. Right. So nothing super fancy, guys. Nothing, you know, outrageous by any means. Uh, she did great for me. I was going to go out there with some super tiny tires. And after looking at it, once it was done, it just, it didn't, it needed big tires. The, the 33s just wasn't going to cut it. So I went to the 40s and said full sand mode. But it was fun, man. I ran this thing. I believe I did every trail except for the last two with this rig. The last two trails I did with a stock Gen 9, uh, just for fun and to have you know a good time with the, with the factory vehicle. We got to see a lot of people out there with all kinds of different vehicles from all kinds of brands, and I appreciate them all. I really do. Um, I personally had a lot of fun with this truck, and uh, yes, my two-speed still works. <laughs> um, and uh, my winch also wired up to my remote. So there was a lot of wiring that was done to this thing to make everything work cohesively. Uh, to have fun with on the trail. I did do a couple recoveries with my winch, which is always fun to do, right? I mean, you're out there. You got to have fun and geek out with the rest of the crowd. So uh, that's my Gen 9 to slam the door on that bad boy. Um, and it was fun. It was fun to take out and uh, to enjoy. Um, let's see. True Tech could create a scale driving school. Yeah, dude, we should create a scale driving school. <laughs> uh, make everyone earn their licenses, right? Um, I love that, man. I love that. Uh, Crow Below Studios. Yes, uh, this is a Gen 9 underneath there. Um, let's see. Uh, <laughs> John Michael Chateron says uh, he's having some problems with the, the micro server. Um, I'm running the Micro 99, as Aaron mentioned uh, as well. Uh, Micro 99 seems to be working really well, um, mainly because when I ran the RAW 500, I had to install a BEC, which bumped up the power output. And putting any more power than what the factory ESC can give out would cause an issue with that micro servo because it can only handle, I believe, the six volt reference. Um, so for me to bump up my voltage, I ended up having to buy a, uh, a servo that can handle that kind of amperage going through it. So the Micro 99 was my go-to servo uh, for this platform. All right. Um, <laughs> Teddy Wesby, you said Red Cat Toolkit. Oh, man. Um, but yeah, guys, so, you know, it's, it's, it's a fun time all together. This is what I enjoy, right? I enjoy the products we bring out, and I, I really do. I love using them stock. Uh, but I personally enjoy the most being able to tinker with them and, you know, putting the stuff that, that I like into them and, and making them my own, right? Not to say that the stock format isn't fun, but it's really fun when you do things that make it unique to your style, right? So I hope all you guys can get that and I hope you guys can appreciate that. Um, and again, it's, it's, it's a fun truck to have. I'm working on a subwoofer enclosure for the back as well that's going to cover uh, a section that I had to cut out for the shock towers to poke through. Um, but uh, all in all, man, it was a great time. I'm happy to have been to USTE 
and able to enjoy my vehicles, my red cap vehicles out there. I appreciate having the opportunity to work in this field that allows me that fun. So, uh, you know, thank you guys for your guys' ongoing support as always. It's always appreciated. Um, so guys, you know, there are some things, let me get my phone out because there are some things I wanted to touch base with you guys, uh, and share with you guys at the same time. Um, so I know that some folks have been asking for some questions, wanting to get some form of an update. Bear with me one sec. <clears throat> A form of some updates on some things in when we were going to have them back in stock. So this time, instead of telling you guys, Hey, you know what? I'll check and I'll come back to you guys. With the information, I hopefully went ahead and preemptively asked before the show to see if I can get any kind of ETAs at this time for you guys, because I know you guys keep asking very similar questions, and rightfully so. There's things that you guys want and or need. So um, first and foremost, people have been continuously asking for the boat, the Riviera body that we've been working on diligently for over a year. Um, that body is potentially due to arrive sometime between April and May. Um, not that far away, but it is coming, and that is the latest update that we've been receiving from the factory uh, um, to have them in our hands to then have to you guys. Um, the Caprice body that a lot of you guys have been asking over the last few months, uh, as if a lot of you guys didn't catch this, roughly around three months ago, I was informed that they had to stop that project altogether and restart that project all over again. Um, after looking at the body and getting a few samples, we just were not 100% happy with what the total outcome was and the way it looked. So we went back to the drawing board. We refined everything, and we're still working on that at this time. At this time, projectively, the ETA for that is sometime this summer for the Caprice body uh, to come out. Um, let's see. Uh, all right. One of the biggest things that people have been asking, now that the RDS video has dropped, and people have been seeing quite a bit of these 26s or 2.6s uh, that we've been sharing on the Monte Carlo and the RDS video. And a lot of you guys saw, uh, if you saw footage of USTE, we had the Monte there with the 26s mounted onto it. Uh, so everyone wants to know, when are these 26s going to arrive? We've been teasing them on the show and now, you know, on video. So rightfully so, I went ahead and I inquired for you guys. And it looks like we hope to see them within the next 60 days. So the next two months, we should have the 26s in our hands and hopefully starting to ship out to you guys. I do believe there's gonna be three styles available for those. So uh, yeah, uh, now you guys have a little bit of an ETA, an idea of when those will be coming out for you guys. Um, so this brings me off to the next topic. You know, we, we try to keep our eyes open and watch out for everything going on within the RC community and our pages. Not just the lowrider community, but our crawler community, our drift community, our uh, bashing community, and our RC lowrider community. So we're always keeping eyes on it. And we, at times, see people have a complaint and or a problem with a product that has failed. We always encourage you to please, 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 please reach out to us. We're always eager. We have an awesome support team here that's always willing to work with you and try to make sure that we take care of you. Red Cat has always stood behind their products. If there's any problems that you guys have that we can take care of, we would love to do so. If you guys don't know how to initiate that, you can do one of two things. One, you can always inquire by messaging us at, on Facebook uh, to where that will go to one of our support team members and they'll reach out to you and answer your questions directly. Another thing you can do if you have a warrantyable claim, because we do warranty our products for one year, and that concludes electronics, um, you can go to our website at redcatracing.com and file a claim on the drop-down menu. Uh, if you go actually scroll all the way to the bottom, it'll say file a claim, and you can actually fill out a claim form so that we can get the ball rolling for you there as well. So keep that in mind, guys. Always know we're here to help. Don't feel frustrated. We see it happen on so many platforms and with so many different vehicles and different manufacturers. We just want you to know the resources there to help you guys out. That's what we're here for, is to make sure that you guys are enjoying the hobby to the best of your ability. You're trusting in us to buy from us, so trust in us to try and at least make it right. Thank you guys so much for that, and I appreciate you guys being able to reach out to us to do so. Um, all right. One of the last things that we're going to talk about today, I got some things that arrived for the RDS. So let's move jennifer nine out of the way 
It's Jennifer with a G. It's my baby, Jennifer Nine. All right, RDS. A lot of folks are starting to ask, you know, when are we going to start getting upgrades? Are there going to be upgrades available for the RDS? Uh, what's coming up next? What is potential? So we've been seeing quite a bit of people that have started um, sending their endpoints over clocking, potentially causing some issues with the steering servo and or hitting a wall. Things happen. It's plastic. Servo horns can break. Now, I have in my hand an aluminum servo horn that literally arrived today. And it's a good looking servo horn, I have to say. So let's open this bad boy up. Let's take a look at this bad boy. This is the RDS servo horn in aluminum. It is black with a etched finish on the sides. It does say Red Cat. Right, let me see. It's kind of hard to see there, guys. There you go. And it is set up for different dimensions of servos. One of the issues that uh, we quickly found is the variance in um, height of servo horn, of servos themselves, right? The ears on the servos. Some of them that are using aluminum cases uh, happen to be shallower than the ones that use plastic ones. So the little notch that you guys see here, right there, that will hopefully allow to compensate uh, for the use on a lot of variety of servos so that they do not hit the screws that are coming down. Um, we have tested this one individually already. We've put it on a Yokomo servo, and it fit perfectly. Uh, I am going to put it on a 299 here from Reefs RC in a few minutes and see how it fits on that as well. Um, but uh, the servo horn is here, and it should be on our website as early as tomorrow. The uh, retail on one of these will be $16.99, and will be available to ship as early as tomorrow. Um, so big shout out. Thank you so much to the entire engineering team for starting to work on things. Usually we you know, spend a lot of time waiting for things to arrive, and uh, this time everything worked out well. Uh, oh, perfect. Shane actually just chimed in. Thank you, Shane. Shane says that it also fits the Futaba CT700 uh, slash one. So we already know that it's starting to work on a lot of different servos. And for a lot of you guys that are running higher power servos, this is going to be the answer to the DDS type style steering system that we have on this vehicle. Um, so um, that is for the RDS. Servo horn, aluminum servo horn. Again, will be available on our website tomorrow. Sixteen ninety nine will be the retail price and can ship as early as tomorrow, guys. So, what else do we have? Well, hope Teddy Westby's still in here. Teddy, if you're in here, this one's for you, bro. It may not be exactly what you asked for, but what I hold in my hand is a turnbuckle tool. So technically, Teddy, I got you. You're right. It's a uh, red cat tool, not a kit, but it's a tool. This bad boy is a turnbuckle tool. Uh, for a lot of you guys that, uh, um, let me see, have uh, vehicles that use turnbuckles, uh, like the RDS will use for adjustability, we went ahead and created a um, turnbuckle tool which fits the turnbuckles on the car to help you do your alignment settings on the RDS. So that is what's going to fit on one side. The opposite side is going to fit a lot more popular um, turnbuckle designs that are out there already on the market. So it, this is a two-sided, uh, two different sizes on uh, on this tool, one side and the other. I do believe the size on this is going to be a two, a 3.2 on one side and a four mil on the other. So keep that in mind, guys. Uh, this will be for the uh, RDS specifically, and it will go on your turnbuckles like so. For you to make all of your adjustments accordingly. So, this bad boy is going to be also available on our website as early as tomorrow and will retail for $11. Um, and it's specifically, again, intended for the RDS, uh, ready to run and the kit, right? It's intended to fit our turnbuckles as well as the other popular uh, turnbuckle size uh, for the drift scene. So, 
Uh, those will be available tomorrow, guys. Make sure that if you do need one, you guys can get them and order them. If you are a member of our reward system, man, utilize those rewards points and get it for free if you have enough points. Shoot, I know Tony Gutierrez probably has thousands of rewards points. I'm sure he can probably get 20 of these and, <laughs> and whatnot. So uh, we appreciate you guys, man. Thank you guys so very much. Um, we know that uh, it's going to be a busy year. I mean, th technically, we've already dropped quite a bit of vehicles. I think we're into like five already this year, products that we've dropped, um, you know, from the Gen 9 to the RDS to the, sh you know, Show Builders Kit. Um, you know, we, we got a lot of things in the works that we're, you know, working on at this moment. And some things that are really close and right around the corner that I can't share with you guys just yet. But know that a few more things are coming when it comes to product, actual cars themselves. Um, and it may not be on road. It may not be crawler. It may not be air. It may not be surface. But it's RC. And we're not done. And we're going to continue to have fun with you guys. So uh, we appreciate you guys. We always do. Uh, every single one of you guys that makes Red Cat what it is, we try to listen to everyone's suggestions and come out with the best solutions um, within our realms. And uh, the last few years have been amazing in the growth of Red Cat. And we hope to continue that motion moving forward and bringing you guys the best of ourselves uh, as we go. So again, as a recap, not this Saturday, but next Saturday, we will be at uh, in Long Beach for the Lowrider Super Show. So if you're out there, come stop by, say hi. Turnbuckle Tool, RDS Servo Horn will be available tomorrow on our website. So make sure you guys swing on by and pick yours up so that you guys can get them going. They do fit a couple different um, uh, servos, right, that we've already tested them on. And uh, aside from that, guys, I hope the rest of you guys have an amazing rest of your week. You know what? I'm going to do one more really quick and just double check these questions, make sure I'm not missing anyone because I know I get carried away. Um, and Teddy, I'm telling you, bro, I was thinking of you with that toolkit. I just, I, I, I knew I was going to make someone happy. <laughs> um, let's see here. Uh, all right, let me scroll down. <laughs> uh, Jim, Jim Palazzo, Zolo, thank you so much for that. I experienced great customer service from Red Cow Racing. Thank you. We hope to always uphold that standard. And our guys here, they're all RC guys. So you're not dealing with someone that has no clue anything about RCs. These people live, breathe, eat, sleep RCs that all work within our company. So know that when you're talking to someone from our realms, it's someone that has some experience in the RC world. Um, let's see. Just double checking some comments, make sure we're good. Matthew Flores, like, I only said the right word. <laughs> hey, good seeing you here, bro. <laughs> um, let's see. Tony's waiting for his Gen 9. You're waiting for the Drifty 9. The, or the, yeah, right? Um, Brandon, yes, I'll see you there, bro. That's what I'm talking about. Yes. Um, who painted this bet? I wish. I can say Brendan painted it because Brendan does amazing work. He's my, he's the only person I want painting my bodies from now on. I just wish I can afford him. Uh, but this was just something I painted on my own. Uh, it's nothing fancy. Uh, just something I decided to, to try and do. I'm not really great at Lexan bodies and painting. Um, I can admit that. But, you know, I mean, it, it looked okay. <laughs> and I like the uneven lines and the color change thereof, you know. Um, let's see. Oh, Dayton's. Yes, yeah, Seth, thank you for reminding me on that. So Dayton's, guys, so sorry. Uh, Dayton's and Shocks um, will be available back on the website sometime next week from what I was just told. Thank you for that. So sorry, Seth, for, for missing that. Thank you for reminding me. Um, Tony Gutierrez, who maintains my beard and hair? Um... <laughs> I got a really good barber, man. I got my barber's, he's, he's got fire. But my beard, this is all me. I take care of it myself. Um, I, yeah, I got to trim it and everything. Yeah. Um, 
D'Angelo, we need the dunks. Well, just know the 26s will be coming out in about 60 days, D'Angelo, if you didn't see that earlier. Uh, all right. Double check in here. Jordan says, hopefully you guys can make it out to Spotcom, Hawaii. They have uh, a badass drift course for the RC world. Man, that would be, that's going to be my, my goal in life is to try and make it to something like that. Don't know if, if Red Cat can send me. You guys should tell Red Cat to send me. Yes, do it, do it, do it now, please. Go to Hawaii to drift. Hey, let's do it. It's sideways. What? What? It's all fun and games if somebody loses an eye. And it's just fun. But all right, I appreciate you guys. Um, well, I hope the I hope the rest of you guys have an amazing rest of your week. We look forward to another show next week. We'll see what we'll share then, and I'll give you guys yet another reminder, and hopefully even some more information on this awesome sub event happening at the Lowrider Super Show, which is going to be put on by a lot of amazing folks like Armando Jebris and the entire crew uh, setting up the whole Whittier Boulevard scene. So I'll try and get some information for that so we can really categorize that and really highlight it because I'm really juiced and looking forward to it. Uh, <laughs> see, I will be swimming to Hawaii. They didn't say I can't go, though. Just, just say it. Uh, but guys, I'll leave you guys with the same video that we started with. So you guys that did not get a chance to see uh, some of the content from USTE, you guys can get another chance at it now. We'll see you guys next week. Same time, same channel, and the same ugly face that you guys see. You guys stay blessed. Till next time. Check it out, we're at USDE 2023, and you know your boy can't make it anywhere unless he's got tacos. <laughs> My dude, where are you from? Where are we coming from and what are we eating? I'm from Quakertown, Pennsylvania, and we're eating tacos. You're hanging out with the Taco King himself. We appreciate y'all from Florida, coast to coast, to the west coast, to the east coast. We're having a good time because tacos, baby. Yeah!